For 30 years I have been exploring how sound, or atkatsum as it is known to the Skohomish peoples, watching it through the seasons, delighting in its return to health. But something new has energized how sounds marine life, and it just has gripped me. It's the recent appearance of anchovy. After years of industrial damage, marine life in Howe Sound is making a remarkable recovery. Schools of herring, absent for 25 years, have rebounded in the last decade. And to the delight of all of us, marine mammals have swarmed back into Howe Sound to feed on the herring. But recently, Howe Sound's recovery has again strengthened. In 2015, giant schools of anchovy, a herring-like fish, appeared in Howe Sound, greatly increasing the feed for salmon, for seabirds, and for marine mammals. Sea lions are now frequent visitors to Howe Sound. Fishing guides say that the winter Chinook salmon fishing is the best in 30 years, and our seal population has ballooned. And with plenty of seals to prey on, transient killer whale visits to Howe Sound are way up. All this activity has really animated the waters of Howe Sound. So it's June 2016. I hear there are big schools of anchovy right now off the southwest corner of Bowen Island. Bowen, or Quelacum as the Skohomish peoples know it, is my home. I haven't seen the anchovy yet, so I'm heading out to take a look. Things look hopeful. Offshore are several boats fishing for salmon, and I've heard that the Chinook and Coho salmon follow the anchovy schools closely. Near Cape Roger Curtis, I pause offshore and look around. Suddenly I notice two sea lions a bit further out. As I head toward shore, I see another sea lion hauled out on a dock. And the cape itself is crowded with gulls. This surprising show of marine life tells me something, something big is up. And then I see the splashing. Just little flits of water here and there. It must be a big school of small fish right along the shore. As I approach, I start to see flashes until they fill the water beneath me, glinting like thousands of sunlit silver dollars, sparkling amid shadowy forms of small fish. So I get my camera into the water. What I see is mesmerizing. Thousands of fish, densely packed, flowing together with a synchronized elegance of a single organism. And suddenly, I understand. The anchovies open their mouths wide as they swim, flaring their gill covers as they strain plankton from seawater. And as each silver gill cover catches the light, it sparkles. This is the silver dollar flash that distinguishes anchovy from herring. So who are these anchovy? I know that along the California coast, anchovy, along with sardines, are the dominant small schooling fish. I learned that BC's waters are at the northern limits of this warm water fish, and so anchovy are only occasional visitors. Like herring and other feeder fish or bait fish, anchovies are a critical link in the food chain of marine ecosystems. They graze on plankton and convert it into calorie-rich, oily meat. 
and the size of anchovy schools can be extraordinary. One school observed in June 2015 at Porto Cove in northern Howe Sound was half a kilometer long and a hundred meters wide. So I wonder. Vancouver Aquarium has recorded anchovy in Howe Sound during only seven of the years since 1971 and only once during that period were they present during three consecutive years, 1994 to 1996. Anchovy have now been here two years, 2015 and 2016. So, will they be here next year? In 2015, marine scientists got pretty excited when schools of baby anchovy were found swimming in Horseshoe Bay. This meant that the 2015 adults had reproduced or spawned in Howe Sound earlier that summer and therefore the experts guessed that a new batch of adult anchovies would inhabit Howe Sound in 2016, which is exactly what happened. So the question now is obvious. Did the anchovies spawn again this year, 2016? If so, the baby anchovy are out there somewhere, and if they're out there, then they should be maturing into a new batch of anchovy for Howe Sound in 2017. So I decide to hunt for baby anchovy. Unlike adults, juvenile are tiny and hard to see. I will need to swim to find them. I have swum Bowen shorelines for 20 years, but in mid-August 2016, I begin to swim with a new mission, find baby anchovy. I feel like I'm looking for a needle in a haystack. Then one swim in deep bay, out of the corner of my eye, I see reflections. I swim toward a shimmer of movement that resolves into a cloud of tiny, translucent fish. They look like juvenile anchovy and move in a tight school, darting away if I get too close. I slowly follow, shooting video as I can. I am just thrilled. The following day, I am back in the water, this time at the northeast side of the island. I am stunned. Within half an hour, I find baby anchovies here too, right along the shore. I am on a roll, so I head across to the northwest side of the island to look for them there. And almost immediately, I swim into a school. I try another beach, and they're there too. It's just unbelievable. They're everywhere. I check around and hear reports of schools of tiny fish of similar description from Gibson's, West Vancouver, and even along Vancouver shorelines. Jeff Marliap of the Vancouver Aquarium gets a good photograph of one and makes a positive identification. They are juvenile anchovy. So there must have been a major anchovy spawn in Howe Sound in nearby waters earlier in the summer. Things look good for 2017. So where is this all going? Well, who knows? The warm waters of the Northeast Pacific, the so-called warm blob that dominated offshore waters for three years, it's gone. Since late 2016, the nearby ocean has cooled. So will the anchovies stick around? All I know is that since the arrival of anchovy in 2015, how sound at Katsum has had its biggest boost to its marine life since the return of herring in the early 2000s. And that increased vitality of how sound at Katsum has been a great, great joy for me to witness.